<laughs> Thank you for still having the energy. Um, my name is Rachel Jacob Jackson. I am a TJF fellow working with the Mayerson Jewish Community Center. My name is Andy Feldman. I'm a fellow this year at Jewish Family Service. And I'm Aya Pillsbury, and I'm at Cedar Village this year, and we are all third year rabbinical students. And so this year, we've been talking and thinking a lot about the question, what makes an organization Jewish? And so we have a lot of really smart, Jewishly-minded people in the room right now. So what do you think is necessary to make an organization Jewish? Dr. Sarsen? It's a hard one. It goes beyond just having Jews. The, 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 the organization should, in some respects, embody Jewish values. You look like you're not in agreement. I'm not in agreement. I'm, you know, I'm flippantly, I was going to say, it has to have the word Jewish in it, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, it's it actually, you it doesn't. It doesn't? Okay. No, because you have, what is today called rock word, and you know, other things. It's not very much. But let's say it's But that was 19th century. Yeah, 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 is there anything else that goes into making an organization Jewish? Um, Jewish people. Jewish people. Jewish finances. And Jewish finances. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you guys hit all of the <laughs> all of the key things that we're going to be talking about tonight. And obviously, we don't have an answer. This is just a, the beginning of an exploration. And so, in our discussions and our thoughts around the year. We've come, we have come to see that Jewish values, Jewish clientele, and Jewish programming all contribute to making an organization, capital J, Jewish. And so we're going to start from the place of values. Because like Dr. Saracen said, if you don't start from, well, she didn't say this explicitly. <laughs> 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 he said that it's not it's not really important. But if you don't start with values, then you can't go anywhere from that. And everything stems from these core values. So at these three organizations, all three organizations are committed to tikkun olam, to making the world a better place. But we do it in slightly different ways, with slightly different emphases, because we serve different segments of the Jewish population. So at JFS, their focus at, uh, is the gear, the stranger, helping the disenfranchised, giving the person who doesn't have a voice, a voice, and giving those people on the margins the resources they need to come be part of, feel more a part of the whole. At the JCC, the emphasis is on collectivity and on coming together and creating this more neighborhood feel. And so it's more about broadening and ingathering than about necessarily just the margins. And then at Cedar Village, we're also committed to Olam, but here it's more about Bacharta Bachayim, choose life. What does it mean to make a fulfilling life? And so all three of our organizations, like I said, have the same values, but with a different list of priorities. And these priorities are reflected and necessary because of the different clientele that we each serve. And in this exploration, we have seen that the clientele that each of our institutions serve are really a reflection of these values, just like the values are a reflection of the clientele. So for each of our institutions, they are fulfilling a need in the Jewish community, that they each aim to serve and better the Jewish community of Cincinnati. So if the Jewish community of Cincinnati sees to need a retirement community, a social service agency, or a community center, then the JCC, JFS, and Cedar Village would no longer need to exist. And it's this, that whole, the, of the mission to serve the Jewish community at its priority, um, where we really find um, common ground. Now, each of our organizations serves populations outside of the Jewish community, but these, those served are really the bonus. We're thrilled that they get served. We're thrilled that these organizations are there to help, to help the Takenha alum, 
but they are not part of that original mission. They're not embedded in that mission. And when Rachel will speak in just a moment about programming and services, how each of these organizations, uh, how the percentages necessarily play out of clients or residents or participants um, of Jewish or non-Jewish participating in these programs or services, it really depends on the program within um, the organization. And financially, this, this, the financials also play a role. So at Cedar Village, if a resident needs financial assistance, the Jewish resident is going to get priority. At Jewish Family Service, there is a uh, program where that has a Jewish donor, and this is coming from the Jewish community, and it's for the Jewish community. So only Jews are benefiting from the service. And the JCC also has similar stories. So we are all this, these financials are a reflection of this mission, of the mission to serve Jewish clientele. Yes. Yeah. Because from what I understand, as, as I know, I've, I've done some work out in Cedar, Cedar Village, there are aspects of Cedar Village, because of federal funding, that have to be equally available to everybody. This is true. But the rehab and a couple of the other sections that um, Jews can't go to the top of the line because it's a huge federal funding there as well. This is, thank you for mentioning that. You're completely right. What we were, what Andy was mentioning was, so if for example, long-term healthcare is really expensive and you never know how long you're gonna need it. And so what ends up happening is there's all sorts of different facilities at Cedar Village different kinds of apartments and then the healthcare units. And so what will happen is no one will get kicked out of Cedar Village, Jewish or non-Jewish, once you're there, they're gonna make it work for you, even if they're gonna eat losses. But if you're Jewish coming into Cedar Village, they will, uh, they will eat a loss from the get-go, as opposed to if you're not Jewish, it's a much more complicated process. I don't know what all the details are about that process, but I do know that when they have the choice, the Jewish person, they're more willing to eat their losses on a Jewish resident than on a non-Jew. Obviously, a life is a life, and they're committed to life in general. But thank you for making and that, that feeds directly into programming. Um, so one thing as we were doing this exploration that we found was that each institution has very similar values of serving the Jewish community as its mission. And the clientele is a reflection of those values. But the programming is very um, institution and organization specific. Um, for example, each of these three communities deals with seniors. However, because at Cedar Village, many of the residents are in-house, the type of programming that they do there will be very different than the type of programming that someone who's coming to the community center might be experiencing in a lunch or in um, an hour-long lesson of sheet work. And same thing with Jewish family service. The, the seniors who are served there are in a different demographic. They might be a little bit more vulnerable than those who are coming to the JCC. Not saying that the JCC also doesn't do additional outreach, but that each of these programs are specific to the clients um, that each of these institutions has. Um, at the same time, um, each institution has to look at what are our values and how are we going to share that with our clientele. One quick example would be on how to deal with food, um, right? So at Cedar Village, in-house, 100% kosher in all public areas. In your own home, you can do whatever you want. At Jewish Family Service, the pantry is kosher. And that means there's a choice for Jews no matter what, if they keep kosher or not. And at the community center, when public events are held, Often the choice is to go with a kosher choice, which is in-house. But what happens, because there's 50% of the members are not Jewish, those have to be embraced and not just sort of, oh, you're here. 
they need to be allowed to eat what they choose to eat too. And so this is a struggling dilemma for each of these groups because of their clientele. And so as we're speaking about the overlap, we want to sort of give you a visual demonstration. So not surprisingly, as we discussed earlier, the biggest overlap is values. And the reason it's not 100% just all white is because like I said earlier, each of our agencies prioritizes a different Jewish value. You can't do everything at once because we each serve a different segment of the Jewish community and it's why each of our organizations is really important to all be here at once. We don't all do the same thing, but we have a very similar outlook on what needs to get done. And like we said earlier, that the clientele are really a reflection of these values and um, that each of them share a mission of serving the Jewish community and that's our overlap. But it is smaller because um, just like Aya said, you can't do, um, you can't do everything and they do serve uh, very different needs. And, um, right, and so one of, the way, <laughs> one of the ways they serve those needs is through programming. And as you can see, the overlap is very minimal here. Um, because each of them do have very different clientele. The programming then needs to reflect that. However, you will notice that there is still overlap. And the idea there is that it's better to have multiplicity and various options to ensure that people have different things to do and on the other side, to make sure that nobody's lost. To make sure that you have something and you're not missing any group. And it also means that we can do things together. Like for example, at the end of last semester, there was a conference on aging that was co-sponsored by our three organizations and a bunch of other organizations in the fellowship. And it was about what to do about Jewish Cincinnati and aging in general. How can we make this better? And how can we prepare for it? And so each or the people from each organization, since they have different backgrounds and serve different people on a regular basis, had different ideas and different things to contribute. And so if any one of the organizations had tried to have this conversation alone, it would not have been nearly as productive because we really need everyone to be part of the conversation together. So in our, in our exploration, we clearly, I think, said um, uh, many times of our, our, the emphasis we found on Jewish values, on prioritizing Jewish clientele, and how those things both influence the programming and the services that um, are representative of what the organization is there to serve in the, in the first place, what their specific role is. But we certainly, um, you know, we've really enjoyed, and we, I think that we were surprised to um, find the trends that we did, but we have not answered the question. We've just um, started to fill in a piece of the puzzle. <laughs> so here's your next puzzle piece. I hope that you haven't received this one. <laughs> this is your next 